On today's episode, we break down the news, and we also break down a bunch of really difficult start-sit decisions. We tell you exactly how we are handling those predicaments. And with Jason gone, the boom-boom kicker, it's up to me, baby. Make sure you subscribe right now. Leave us some comments about how great my boom-boom reading was, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. <laughs> Roar. That's right, Jay Grizz. Couldn't have said it better myself. Jason wasn't lying. He's not here. He went on to injured reserve for the next two days. What that old uh, the Deshaun Watson? Oh injured yeah, he, he's, he's technically yeah. You're right. It's the um, medically cleared, but but still still hurting. Yeah, Jason was medically cleared to <laughs> perform for today's show. But chose not to. I said, nah, man. Nah. Uh, but, yeah, two-man band. Mike, the fantasy hitman, is here. Hello. I'm, I'm here. And we've got the full crew over there in Deucer's Alley. Now, Brooks, is uh, he's repping the, you know, to get into the baseball talk, he's repping the Orioles Ooh, uh, that's hoodie. Poor, that's poor form. We had a rough time. But that was that a full sweep? You know it was. I. You know what? I. I wasn't a hundred percent sure, Brooks. I'm sorry about that. No problem. I do know a thing or two about sweeps. But yeah. 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 As do I. Yes. What a ninth inning I saw. You did. Did you catch some of it? I. I yeah. I was coaching the 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 boys football team, so I missed most of the game. But I saw a couple innings. I saw us win. I. You know, my favorite people. You know, the Diamondbacks are our team, and uh, it's been a rough go. And when I say rough go, I mean 16 years <laughs> since they won a playoff series. And I, I throw a couple tweets up about the Diamondbacks. And my favorite people <clears throat> that are now muted are the ones that say, uh, stick to football. Stick to football. What? Yeah. Yeah. Stick to, stick to like, football. You're not even like making a political statement. No, like you're no. just talking about a different sport. I'm saying, I think my <laughs> tweets are like, yeah. Uh, uh, me and my 12-year-old are celebrating the home runs. Yeah, but stick to football. Stick to football. Yeah. <laughs> like, eat it. You know what I mean? What? Um, Goodness gracious. But, hey, look, it's fun. It's fun. And, look, listen, Dodgers fans are very uh, – Yeah, it's probably Dodgers fans vocal, telling you to stick to football. Very vo oh, they are. I can see it because it, it's not just Dodger fans. It's Dodger fans that have the <laughs> – their avatar is Dodger themed. So they're real serious. Well, let, let me give you a headline. Yeah, you're a loser. <laughs> Dude, that's the headline. Uh, I was going to say, everybody right? hates you, except, for, I mean, you're, you, you've are you won like 100 games five times in 10 years. You're like the Yankees of the NL. Everyone hates you except for your people because you always win. So just give us a minute. That's all I'm saying. But, yeah, Brooks, I'm sorry. I would have loved to have our team's face off in the World Series. Um, yeah, the, our, main, the, our main footballer's account isn't tweeting about yeah. baseball. Are the Minnesota Twins still in? They just got eliminated last night. Crap. Because you used to be a Twins fan. Yeah. That was, I was like, when I sort of knew what was going on, I was like, whoa, a Twins Diamondbacks? World yes, Series? That'd yes. be fun. The, uh, the Astros oh, well. defeated them last night. Oh, well. I still got a team in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you still got one of them. Uh, I, but this is, a, this is a football podcast. We'll get to it. We've yeah. got starts of the week today, matchups to talk about, boom, boom, kicker. Performed by, oh no, it won't be no. Jay, it won't be Jay Grizz. No, I've I, I found something. I, I now are you doing? Did you prepare it, or are you just? Well, when I say I prepared it, I mean like last night, I had to do some stuff in my backyard. Found like a patch of dirt. Okay, kind of uncovered. I was like, what is what is this? Right, there was a scroll. Okay, there was a scroll in my in backyard, your backyard in my backyard, and it just said week six on it. So. I'll, I'm gonna. So you're gonna read the scroll. I'm gonna, I haven't even read it yet. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna open it live on the air. How I know it's it's the boom boom kicker scroll. Don't worry about that part. Well, I said week <laughs> six on it. Yeah. What else could it be? <laughs> I, I just assume it's kicker related. Follow the show over on X at the FF Ballers if you want um, 
one baseball tweet every 16 years. You can follow me at Andy Holloway. You can follow Jason at Jason FFL. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. Mike is constantly reminding me of the power of the mute button. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I forget yeah. about it after a while, and then I do a filter. Look. A, mu- uh, a turd purge. I generally, social media, you know, X, it's a good time. But sometimes, look, if, if <laughs> sometimes it's not like, like if you're, if you're going to come disrespectful and just rude, I will never hear from you again. <laughs> yeah. But you will keep talking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Please, <laughs> please keep talking to me. Um, well, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance. I can't stop thinking about the scroll. I can't wait to see what's on that scroll. Is this papyrus? Like not what? the font, uh, not the font, uh, but the <laughs> but the actual like the material. It, yeah, it I mean, I would call it more like a grocery bag. Okay. Well, it is like the old paper. It's boom boom. So yes, uh Deshaun Watson did not practice again. Oh man. Uh Just... Kevin Stefanski told reporters that PJ Walker is now the quarterback too. He would be the one starting it which they're starting the game that's great news for the cleveland browns because i uh, have a really hard time with like amari cooper right now yeah because i get that pj walker we've seen it right like this is not always a great ride and and if it was pj walker and the browns at home uh against the cardinals i'd be cool yeah it's the browns at home against the 49ers so that seems like a bad time so i'm not i i'd as an Amari Cooper manager right now, I am uh, he's on my bench. And that that isn't a, a lot like I'm not telling everybody to bench him because I know what message will get out there. I'm just saying that like I have I could play Debo, right? Like so I'm gonna play Debo sure right now over him because I just if Watson was back, I'd have a lot of confidence. Yeah, I, I think that moving I mean Amari Cooper is you kind of traded uh, not not it's not super low, but you went and you got Amari Cooper. I think that he's someone maybe you can get right now, and I think it's a good idea because yeah, he had the, a horrible whoever, game with uh, he had a terrible game. Yeah. He, he's probably not going to have a great game. The the it's possible that the manager who has Amari Cooper needs a win right now and can't withstand a potential bad game for Amari Cooper. So that's the sell. Like that's uh, that's something you got to be looking for. Jeff Wilson returned to a practice uh, as a limited participant. There was a comment this morning, I believe the offensive coordinator uh, was asked whether or not, yeah, it was the offensive coordinator, Frank Smith, asked whether or not Jeff Wilson appears ready to play, and let me let me read the quote. Yes. Okay. That was the quote. That would clear some things up and make, I mean, Raheem Mostert's going to be a great start, but if Jeff Wilson is active, I would expect he's the second man up. That's what you would think. Uh, yeah. Saquon Barkley limited on Wednesday. Still up in the air. Darren Waller, he says he expects to play Sunday night. So you're taking a risk. Oh, man. What's yeah. the Monday night football game, Brooksy? Or do you guys remember? Ooh, I think it's Chargers-Cowboys. So Parham, Everett. Maybe somehow Ferguson's on yeah, the way. Yeah, or like maybe. a schoon could be your like emergency oh, pivot. Man. I, I'm oh. just trying to think if you want to ride Waller into the he, night. Yeah. Which I, I know Al Borland, you got Darren Waller. I do. And are you going to? I guess just watch the news. Yeah, I'll be watching. I signed uh, or I traded for Logan Thomas just in case. Yeah, yeah, he good. might be a better play anyways. Yeah, good back I don't know. Uh, Mike Evans did not practice Wednesday. That is, is that panic alarm? No, I'm not going to panic alarm it, but I am going to be highly concerned that Mike Evans suffered a hamstring injury back in week four. He had the bye week. Yeah, he had the time off. So, I mean, it was already – it needed to be – you needed to be hesitant about Mike Evans, a 30-year-old with a hamstring injury. It's going to take him longer to recover just naturally given like he's a little bit older for an NFL player. So the fact that he's not going on Wednesday, it is you, – you need to be paying attention because, like, if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to get anything done against the Detroit Lions, it's, it's going to be throw the ball. Yeah, and I was They're gonna, not going to run. I was going to say, like, that is a uh, – it's a home game. But it would be a little concerning for the Bucks offense as a whole to not have Mike Evans against the Lions pass rush. So we have still no Mike Evans. So, so we, wait, we confirmed d- through Thursday. Yeah, we just got a tr- uh, tweet from Greg Allman 
Still no Mike Evans at Bucks practice today, though. Todd Bowles said Wednesday that the important day for him would be Friday. Okay. Yeah, Friday's a – I mean, that's tomorrow. Can't be feeling good about it. Hollywood Brown did not practice Wednesday due to illness, so we hope he would be back. Keontae Ingram, Cardinals running back Keontae Ingram, back at practice in a limited, limited fashion. Limited, yeah. He is still – I mean, this came out midday. A lot of, you know, red alert out there. Keontae Ingram is listed as RB1 on the depth chart. To me, it was more so the comments from – Jonathan Gannon saying, like, we're excited to have Ingram back out there. Yeah, and I I was the one in our league of record that went the – I like I had to make a huge move. I needed a running back too, so I was the one who went after DeMarcado. But said on the show, like, it wouldn't surprise me if the team says that Keontae Ingram is their guy. I just – I'm still betting on DeMarcado because I saw someone who actually has – NFL ability, in my opinion, compared to what Ingram has shown. Like Ingram hasn't had a bunch of chances, but he's had he's had some opportunities. I know, including last, uh, I believe last year, different regime and everything. But when you had did like Connor missed a game. He's or averaging one point three yards per carry this year, Mike. <laughs> that, that's all you need to say. <laughs> and, but, mean... but last year, like last year, they could have gone to him, but they didn't. Yeah, last year he had uh, – Connor missed a lot of time. Ingram's highest carry week last year was nine carries, Mike, and he he got 14 yards yeah, on those it, nine carries. Yes, uh, thank he you. He was 2.2 last year, Kyle's, so it has gone down. Kyle's reminding me. And the team went – so when Connor was out, the team went to Eno Benjamin, and Eno was okay, and then he was rewarded by being removed from the team. Yeah, so, like, yeah he's gone. It's, it's so – why is Ingram on the team? I don't know. Locker room guy. Maybe. Just a nice Maybe. fella. All right. Thursday night official designations for the game this evening. Travis Kelsey listed questionable but expected to play. Yeah, Swift is our, Swift is going, so he's going to play. Oh, is she? Yeah, it was reported. No. No. I'm oh, just, oh, I, my, Mike reporting on, I'm only on past, Taylor Swift with the most hesitant I, voice ever. Because I don't want to give it more. But that actually press. does. Why would but she it, go if he's not playing? That's the point. If it's a pretty strong signal to me that Travis Kelsey's going to go. Uh, Javante Williams removed from the injury report will play. Greg Dulcich, questionable. I do want to throw this out there. Last week, everyone listening, you you got to experience uh, the DJ Moore, <laughs> Justin Fields Thursday night football, uh, right? Uh, Al, you experienced that. I sure did. And Mike was on the receiving end. I sure did. <laughs> now, just for those following along watching Thursday night football, I want you to understand here, Mike and I are squaring off this week in our league of record. And it's a it's a big time matchup that the basically the loser is, is in trouble. We'll be looking at do I sell for next year? And uh I've got Isaiah Pacheco tonight and Travis Kelsey. So I'm hoping we can do a little whole like a a redo of what happened last Let's week. Let's go Rashi Rice. Oh, in, in lieu of <laughs> You're like, who else could possibly yeah. get the ball for the Chiefs against yeah. the Broncos? I mean, I can't say let's go Sky Moore because that's just dumb. Yeah. All right. Uh, you do have the Kansas City defense tonight. Oh, yeah. Let's go, Kansas City so I get defense. to root for Russell Wilson. All right. That was today's News and Notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. We have another London game? It never stops. Are you serious? The attack upon my Sunday morning sleep. What happens if, if so? If, I think they're going to move franchises over there. Like I think that's coming, and and in Jacksonville will probably become the London Jaguars, because um, there's a lot of Jaguars over in 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 England. Uh it's probably happening. It'll probably be two teams. I don't. Uh, Hi, man. Will Will this be the norm though? Like, will these games? I mean, they would have to take place early. Yes, they had the because the, of uh, the, the way time, time zone zones is, work. The time zone is it's a massive problem for. I mean, I don't mind getting up and watching football in the morning. Some people would would really enjoy it, and for the East Coasters, it's not that early. No, it's, it's just not. for you. Yes, okay. well, and and the entirety of the West Coast, it's early. I want you to write the letter to Roger Goodell. I want you to, uh, dear sir, <laughs> you may not know this, but yeah. uh, I do Sunday live, and I really need to sleep in on Sunday. Yeah, and he will send me a photo of him just covered in hundred dollar bills. Double like, birds. And be like, I can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we have um, because it it's not it is not good for the NFL. Like the the sport, the product, the game. You're saying the performances yes. are impacted by it, the travel. It is not. It is not good for them. Just like Thursday night football is not good for for actual football. There are no it's native populations of jaguars living in the UK. So are we changing the team name? That would, that's an interesting one. Like cups of tea or something. Oh yeah, take that, I, Brits. I, look, I I don't know what to go with, man. <laughs> the, what do they what do they call the the the, uh, the guards that don't show any reaction? What oh. are the the royal uh what do they call? Oh, it's the, There's got to be a name for those yeah, guys. It is. It's escaping me. Yeah, Money. I got three people in Deucer's Alley. They know nothing. Come on, come on, guys. A uh, beef eater, beef eater. They're not be beef eaters. Yeah, that's their nickname. Beef eaters. Yes, that's the best team name ever. The London Beef Eaters. <laughs> oh, I will swag up with that. <laughs> I mean, that's like that's their. You're that's talking like, about the guards that yeah, you, that's, you try to make them laugh and they don't laugh. That's yes, that's the slang term. So that's not the official name, but they are. Oh, that's the team they name are called Beef Eaters. Wow. And they got meat pies over there. I guess Queen's Guard would, you know. Yeah, well, that's yeah. If you want to be formal about it, or King's Guard, right? Uh, would it, be isn't now. It the King's Guard would now? be now. Yeah. What are we talking about? All right, Baltimore <laughs> is three and two. See what you have done to us, Roger. But, yeah, you made a talk about London. Uh, the Ravens three and two taking on the Tennessee Titans, who are two and three. The DraftKings sportsbook line: Baltimore minus four and a half. The over under is forty and a half. Golly, already? Oh. Andy's almost upset of the week. I really tried to resist this one. Wow. I mean, but what if I what if I can tell you that they won't drop seven passes this week? Baltimore? Yeah. You can't tell me that. But what if I What if you hope? What if I can imply <laughs> that they won't drop seven passes? Uh look, that would be helpful. Because like I think legitimately, if they don't, if they catch two more of those seven, they probably win last week. Yeah, that's how crazy and egregious the drops were. To highlight, Look, if it, the, I will highlight it here. Pro Football Focus, the highest graded quarterback of last week was Lamar Jackson, who whose team lost in a very low scoring game against the Steelers. He was a massive disappointment for fantasy football. And it was not his fault. Yeah, I saw it coming. <laughs> got that one right. I mean, you got the game right, but you look the Baltimore Ravens. They figured out a way. To the lose. Baltimore Ravens offense is a is now becoming a, an every week series of ifs. The execution of like you got the super MVP season from Lamar Jackson, and then since then it's been if they've been healthy, if they caught the football, if they didn't, if they had some running backs. You know, if Lamar Jackson wasn't hurt, if, 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 like, it's just not coming together. Now, Lamar played great. I think he's a, a potential buy in fantasy after last week's disastrous seven drop performance by this uh, crew. But let's be fair about it. Rashad Bateman is the kind of guy that drops passes. Nelson Aguilar is the kind of guy that drops passes. Yep. Beckham is the kind of guy that drops passes. I mean, this is. And Zay Flowers, he had a couple of huge mistakes last week. He's he a rookie. So, you know, the Mark Andrews drops, those are the ones that are the, that hurt the most. I can agree with that. The Titans have played better. Tannehill has played better. Uh, this game is not, you know, it's in neutral uh, neutral ground. Derrick Henry, uh, if, you know, they're winning the football game, you're going to be a lot happier with his performance. What do you? What is the man? The Tajay Spears sentiment right now. Like I, when I look at this week, it is screaming at me about all of the, like, t uh, the running back twos and threes. The, the Spears and and then you had like, um, you know, Salvin Ahmed and and Jeff Wilson and Demarcado and Deonta Foreman and like there's a bunch of these players without uh, Zach Moss. Like, what do you do? You know that. These right. number twos that aren't going to be the primary running back. Do you like Spears more than Warren? Less than Warren? Uh, less than Warren. It, Spears is a fifty plus percent of snaps in four or five games. Yeah, he's he's a dart throw, and it's it's strange because he's getting the the snaps. You know, like week one, fifty four percent of snaps, seven opportunities. Week three, fifty six percent, eight opportunities. 
The next week, 53%, but only nine opportunities. He had uh, uh, he had a good fantasy football game uh, in week five because he had, you know, he was four for 35 through the air, and he had that nice uh, run to get the rushing touchdown. So he is a dart throw because it, but he's only, he's a dart throw for game script. Like, if you, if you're on Andy's side of, I mean, if you think that the, the Titans are going to be almost upsetting or perhaps winning this game, then Spears would not be in consideration for me. If you see a world where uh, the Ravens are winning by, you know, by two scores or so, then Tajay Spears is in play because he'll be the one on the field. It won't be Henry. Titans thus far are middle of the pack, uh, a little bit better in terms of fantasy points allowed when you adjust for schedule. They're giving up 14.7 to opposing quarterbacks, uh, which is good enough for 14th, so it's been fine. Tight ends not doing a lot against them. They're seventh in the league. Do we only have one bye week this week? or one, one? Yeah, it's just the two teams. Steelers and Packers are the only two teams? Yes, sir. Okay. So Warren not in play for anybody. But right. um, DeAndre Hopkins, are you chasing what you saw last week? It was a really good performance. He, he looked pretty good. They did lose the game, right? They lost 16-23 to 23 to the Colts. But 11 targets, 8 for 140, still yet to get into the end zone this year. Yeah, and I mean, his yards per completion the last three weeks, it's it's been up at a place where you're happy with it. If you're going to get 11 targets every single week, then Hopkins is is great. Yeah, we're talking a 30% target share. Wide receiver 33, so, or 33, 34 on the season. I, I mean, he's in play as a wide receiver 3 or a flex. Zay Flowers has one finish. Inside the top 24 this year, it was week one, which sometimes that could be the the setup in a way. Uh, our wide receiver 50, 41, 51. Last week, 11 targets, five receptions, had a huge drop. He had two nasty drops. Yes. Two nasty drops and one where he, he fell down. It's kind of hard to tell if the ball shifted in the wind, which caused the fall down, but end of the play was still a – so, I mean, you have three really big missed opportunities for Flowers. Bateman has had three targets in all four of his active games this year, which pales in comparison to Mr. Zay Flowers. Last week, you saw four targets for Odell Beckham. Aguilar involved. It's it's If you're playing pass catchers, it's Flowers or Andrews. No one else is getting the volume to have confidence. Can you see the future with the running back room in Baltimore? I, I think that it is still – Primarily Gus Edwards uh, as the, twelve opportunities last week for Gus, all on the ground, no targets. Yeah, and he was at so he had forty three percent of the snaps. I think Justice Hill was ended up higher than him at fifty six percent. It's he also scored. Yeah, Justice he, Hill had the uh, yes, I, and I four targets. Yeah, yeah Justice Hill had thirty two yards on the ground and the touchdown. If my memory is correct, I think Gus Edwards kind of helped them get there, and it just happened to be. This is where this is the sub, the rotation. Gus Edwards is going to take a break here. Both are in play. Both you're really hoping for a touchdown. At least Justice Hill, though, will get you a couple receptions. That is uh it's exactly how I see it. Over in beef eater country. <laughs> uh all right. So no other discussions then in this game. We good? I mean, other than unless you want to talk about more about Derrick Henry of just what the what the what I mean, he, he he is not what you wanted and expected, and yet he's the RB15, you know, through five weeks with a couple of uh, larger duds in there. Right? You need Derrick Henry around the goal line, and this offense has struggled. And it, uh, for what it's worth, despite my uh, uh, almost upset, the Tennessee Titans are not scoring a ton of points this year. And when, right. when Tannehill has played over there in London – he scored fewer than 10 points in three of five starts. Oh. Or, or, sorry, three of five starts this year. This is his fourth game in oh, London. Okay. Fourth game in London. Okay. All right. Uh, quick break. Coming back with uh, another matchup. All right. The Washington Commanders at two and three take on the Atlanta Falcons, who are three and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Atlanta minus two and a half. The over and under is 42 and a half. Ritter v. Howell. I told these guys last night I was building my DraftKings lineup. 
and uh, I was looking for a flex. And all of a sudden, I see this Washington-Atlanta matchup. And I say, oh, my gosh. B. John Robinson is 5,700? He's in my lineup. It's unbeatable. It was yeah. uh, it was Brian Robinson. Yeah, yeah, but the B. Robinson guy. The you. B. Robinson got me because they play <laughs> each other this week. You got Bijan versus Brian. You were you had Diamondback brain. It, I did have Diamondback brain, and how embarrassing would that have been on Friday? Oh, I'm so upset. If I say B. John Robinson, and then during you guys the week, see this? He's only fifty three hundred. <laughs> I know. you it, idiots. It, how do you not have him? It uh, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I pivoted, but uh, yeah, Bijan. Brian Robinson, the opportunities in weeks one and two for Brian Robinson were huge. He, he was kind of one of the uh, breakout stars to start the year. The last three weeks, it's gone down. Atlanta's favorite in this one. How? Wh where's your comfort level with Brian Robinson right now? Uh, it is. It's it's so so. I mean, it's a he's another game script running back. The in the in these games when they are trailing for a lot. It's Antonio Gibson. I mean, not that Gibson was a uh, superstar by any means last week, but he was on the field for 54% of the snaps. He had four catches for 64 yards. The, but the point being, when they're losing, it's Antonio Gibson. And when they're winning, it will be Brian Robinson. So it's it's a, it's a committee, but it's a committee by game script. All right, Terry McLaurin is a wide receiver what rest of the season? Three? Two-ish. Two-ish. Yeah, I think he'll, I mean, he's still Terry. He's still great. He'll have gr big games, so that pushes him over. I think on a week-to-week -week basis, so you're expecting a three, which really stinks. On the other side of the ball, Drake landed nine targets last week, seven yeah. the week before. He actually caught six passes. Best game of the year, six for 78, uh, no touchdown, but – a double digit like if you were if you're looking rest of games. season i'd take terry mclaurin over drake lund would you yeah i mean drake's the one who's actually putting up some numbers uh, terry, like are you, if you're looking at let, terry, me look at let me look at terry terry has a spike game against uh, philadelphia at 18.6 but i mean he has he has two double digit games and that was denver which yeah it's the denver broncos and then philly which it was a, they were in you know massive trailing mode where they they had to air the ball yeah out. i'll take terry okay. and I, I it's not a disrespect to drake it's just the confidence i have in the quarterback getting the ball near him and they have the same targets this year drake london's caught 17 passes mclaurin's caught 25 of them uh, but drake london has has done as well as he can do and kyle pitts had a game last week dude which was great because i played him against him that is i don't know how much you got to see of it over the weekend but desmond ritter Desmond Ritter balled out. He looked incredible. I mean, he was sharp. He was making correct reads. His ball placement was tremendous. I mean, the I fact— I mean, 76% of passes the, completed. That's a—on 37 attempts. The fact that he—I mean, I, we have too much evidence for me to say that was it. That was the turner—or the, the corner was turned for Desmond Ritter. But— it's nice to know that it exists. Like there, is, there is a world where Desmond Ritter can actually be competent. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, Jay Grizz's quarterback, Justin Fields, where he had like three games that looked like he was un incapable, and yeah. then two games where he's he's thrown four touchdowns and looked uh, excellent. This was the quiet down the Taylor Heineke crew game for Desmond Ritter yeah. last week, and uh, the matchup is like Washington when it comes to passing the ball. They're giving up points. You know, we have on the season they're 28th, but schedule adjusted 23rd against quarterbacks, 29th against wide receivers. I, I think Drake London is in play this week. That was the third time in two seasons that Kyle Pitts finished in the top 10 at the tight end position. Seven for 87. Still hasn't scored this year. Uh, I would be, you know, your tight end options, you know, changes. Every team is different. I'm not going to chase that. The commanders are very good against tight ends thus far this year. They they are, but I think the fact that they are bad against wide receivers and Kyle Pitts has been playing frequently as a wide receiver, I, that gives me a little bit more confidence. I'm not. I, I'm not Logan like, Thomas. I'm not jamming Kyle Pitts into the into the lineup, but 
I think that he is in play. Logan Thomas uh, or Kyle Pitts, same I'll, game. Uh, I'd go Logan Thomas there, but not by not by a wide margin. M the matchup is very good on that side. The Falcons giving up uh, almost the most points to opposing tight ends. Uh, I saw Jahan Dotson hit some waiver wires. Don't blame anybody for that. Yeah, uh, it's it makes me sad, but it looks like this offense is willing to distribute the ball to uh, Byron Pringle and Diami Brown and, and Curtis Samuel and Curtis Samuel. Curtis Samuel right now is a better player to roster than John Dotson. It feels like it. Uh, you talked about Brian Robinson already. Sam Howell, I I any interest? Falcons it's, have been pretty stout. They're it, at home. It's not the worst 12th uh, adjusted against fantasy quarterbacks in Sam Howell. It, he's, been, like, he's been getting it done for fantasy, but I, like if Stafford is out there, I'd much rather play Stafford. Worth noting that Johnny Smith has been limited in practice. Johnny Smith's targets over the last four weeks, six, eight, six, seven. If you were to miss, that'd be a big opportunity for Kyle Pitts to maybe get a little bit more work sure. that he would obviously let you down on. Uh, Minnesota, sure. one and four. <laughs> Chicago, one and four. Oh, baby. NFC Circle North. the drain game. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus two and a half. The over-under is 43 and a half. Who wants Caleb Williams more? I mean, there's a lot of teams going after it right now. Yeah, I think New England's pretty interested. New England, Carolina. Well, Carol well I mean, Carolina, Carolina doesn't yeah. get him, but I'm saying, like, they're they're playing like they think they have it. Uh, <laughs> Kirk Cousins against the Bears without Justin Jefferson. I am still really excited about that. I think he's going to be able to get it done. Hawkinson, huge weapon for him. He's obviously in your lineup. I believe Addison and Osborne are both – solid plays this week it would not surprise me at all if kg osborne had a better week than than addison yeah i can see uh, that i think you know it would probably come with a touchdown but both of those players you know like i said yesterday cousins the vikings they throw the ball at least thus far more than any team in football and so i'm in on both of those players the 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 bears defense they don't just like giving up fantasy points. They love it. <laughs> I was going to say they also give them up on big oh, play on oh, big okay. plays, which is Addison's territory. But but they also yes, they love it. Yeah. Um, where which, where are you at with Justin Fields? It must start. Okay. Yeah, he's in must start. Cat. He was in. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of subterfuge of my own plans here. But I I thought about sending some offers out to Al Borland th oh, this interesting. week. Interesting. Which would have involved sending Tua away. Uh, but just, uh, you know, Justin Fields, the last two weeks, you brought it up. He's got, he's got the numbers of Patrick Mahomes this year. It's just all come in two weeks. Yeah. But no, number one fantasy quarterback last week, number three the week before. Yeah. And the it's we, – we, we got the running going this past week, 57 yards on the ground. But we, we need to see that, Mr. Fields. Give me at least 40 yards. Well, it's going to be a little easier if you don't have any confidence in your running game. Right now, you have Khalil Herbert that's set to miss the game. You have Deonta Foreman, who I he was inactive last game, right? Yes, he Because has. Homer and Roshan and Herbert all got hurt in that game. So Deonta Foreman right now looks like the first man up, but now... Oh, he's first man up and last man standing. Both, yeah, but Roshan could play. He could. He is in the concussion protocol still. He did not practice Wednesday. Yeah, it, let us know if you hear anything on Thursday, Brooks. His his game reminder it was Thursday, so there's extra time for him. But does it change place. your confidence in like flexing Freeman if Roshan's active? I assume it would. Freeman, Foreman, Foreman. Yeah. Oh, I was like Devonta Freeman. Yeah, he's playing there too. Yeah, it it certainly changes the confidence, but we don't we don't know for sure what this split is going to be. Like, I of all the options. None of them would surprise me. It, like If Roshan Johnson comes out, if he clears concussion protocol, and he's 75% of the snaps, and he's like a, the, the guy, he's a workhorse running back for the Bears, it wouldn't surprise me. If Foreman takes Khalil Herbert's job and Roshan remains the pass catcher, third down type of player, it wouldn't surprise me. So he Foreman is in play no matter what for me because it just people need running backs. But if Roshan Johnson misses – then dis despite uh, the Vikings being pretty stout against running backs, at least compared to wide receivers, Foreman is is a is an RB2 kind of must play. 
Just Deontay, pure volume. Let's say Foreman's alone, and you have to stare down the Zach Moss decision Ooh. against Jacksonville. Ooh. Would you take the timeshare that is inevitable between right between Taylor, Taylor and, and Zach Moss, or would you just take the – it, it kind of feels like the decision you make with Damian Pierce every week. Like Damian Pierce is right. the guy with the bad O-line. I think I'd go Foreman. Okay. I think I'd go Foreman over Moss if he's alone. Foreman, if you remember last year, he had some big games. Yeah. Which uh, I hope Roshan's back because you have Deonta Foreman. Um, Justin Fields. Yep. Would you play Justin Fields or would you play Joe Burrow after what he did last week? Fields. Okay. And Cousins on the other side or Fields? That's a tough one. I'd still go f- Oh, man, the matchup is so good. Here's my concern. Yeah. Oh. My concern with Justin Fields this week is that he may not be able to reprise the role if they have nothing on the ground. Like, play-action game I think is going to be really important, and if they shut that down because they don't have Khalil Herbert, you know, I, I'm not sure he's going to be able to force the ball to to DJ Moore and have the success avoiding interceptions like he did last week. I'm, I'm still going to go Fields there. DJ Moore, you must start him. Darnell Mooney, send him to waivers. Cole Komet. Sure. It's been uh it's been really good. Touchdown, yeah. uh three touchdowns in the last two weeks. There you go. Uh, uh let's move on. Seattle's what four- do you, real quick, what are you doing with oh, Madison? Madison. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about Madison. He has been uh solid, not spectacular. Yep. The the the, the snaps have gone down, as you would presume when you trade for Cam Akers, but not that Cam Akers is doing anything special. But Bears thirty first against uh, running backs. I play him over schedule. Foreman. I'm playing Madison. Yeah, yeah I'd play, yes, I'd, I'd play him over Foreman. I well. play him over all the kind of like uh, committee messes. Yeah, I think I think Madison's a a strong RB two start still. I wouldn't say that if I didn't think he looked good. But the last couple of weeks, he's running pretty hard, breaking some tackles. He actually has looked better than he looked to start the year. And their offensive line has figured some things out. All right, the Seahawks are 4-1. and one. They take on the 2-3 and three Cincinnati Bengals. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Cincinnati minus 3. The over-under is 45. When I was going through the games, this to me was the hardest game to project. Cincinnati sitting at home. You guys talked about it. Bounce back performance for Burrow, Chase. It was against the Cardinals. They don't get pressure on you. Like the struggle with Joe Burrow was that you're getting pressure on him and he was not able to move. Now he is... He seems to be uh, healing. There were some times in the game against Arizona that he, he moved around the pocket. There was one play. And a big run. One play in particular where he, end, I believe he ended up getting sacked on it, but he, it looked, I mean, he like broke or avoided a few tackles and just bought himself a whole bunch of time before the inevitable sack. But it was like, oh, <clears throat> Joe Burrow, look at all, hey, you can move. This is great news. And then it turned into a big game. Also, uh, hyper targeting your number one wide receiver, it turns out can be a good strategy. So you guys said you know Arizona didn't have anybody personnel wise that could compete with Jamar yeah. Chase. And he was, they they just they shadowed Chase. Yeah, it did not like after after how many receptions do you do you bail on your uh your your number one corner or whatever shadowing Jamar Chase and they just move to a zone or something. The answer was uh, higher than 14 because they never did it. Uh, Seattle does run a lot of zone coverage, 86% of the time, more than anybody in the NFL. They also give up 39 fantasy points per game to wide receivers. Don't worry about Chase. The question is whether you could go take a take a shot at home on a peripheral wide receiver option. T. Higgins has been limited. Mike, you were saying you are worried about him playing. Yeah, I, they have their bye week coming up next week. So with T. Higgins, broken ribs. He probably will be a game time decision. He was out there at least at practice. You know, saw one short video of him next to Jamar Chase doing the the simulated run and, and catching passes, which he had to you know at least raise the arms. That's very different than knowing that a a an elite athlete's about to hit you in the ribs. So I I think he'll miss one more week just because of the bye week you get to rest him up for three. What's tough is Higgins has been one of the players. That has destroyed people with the I am active and yet yes, he has. not here for your fantasy team. So 
keep that in mind. He could be risky. Yes. Uh, if he's out, do you play around with Boyd or Irwin? Uh, if you're desperate, they're possible. It, the The Seahawks dead last when you adjust for schedule against fantasy wide receivers, and Tyler Boyd was. I mean, he got you some points last week. He was what do we got? Six for thirty nine. Not, I mean, not a great uh, yards per catch, but seven targets. All right, uh, Seattle's coming off the bye. It's averaged thirty two point seven points per game the previous three weeks going into the bye. They're four and one. Uh, Geno though has not been fantasy relevant. Like the team has been winning, they've been scoring points, uh, but Kenneth Walker's been scoring most of them. Yeah, it's it's a Matthew Stafford situation. Yeah, he's only got one top fifteen finish. Metcalf. Yes, Cincinnati allowing the highest average depth of target in the NFL. Over, Lockett? Over 10 yards, yeah, and I'd go back to Lockett. Lockett has been disappointing, but I'd go back to him. Will they throw the ball to JSN beyond one yard? No, well, they can't. There's a there's a, there's a a rule. Force field? Yeah. Uh, the 49ers are 5-0. and oh. They take on the Cleveland Browns that are uh, they're 2-2. Two and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, San Francisco minus 7 on the road. The over-under is 37.5. This game's a little, like, maybe saying this doesn't matter to your fantasy decisions, but I will say this. Kyle Shanahan, when playing a Jim Schwartz defense, I don't know if you saw this, Mike. He's 1-8 and eight historically, and his team's averaged 15 points a game. Oh. Uh, the Browns have been the best defense in football, coming out of the bye, a couple weeks to prepare. Uh they will be, I think they're going to lose, but I think it's going to be because they don't have a quarterback. I say they will be victims of their offense. That's what, Yeah, that's the way it feels. Like, I would not – I don't think this is a ceiling game for Christian McCaffrey. Agreed. Uh, I don't think this is a ceiling game for the wide receiver core. I think this is a drag-out, beat-up, you know, probably, you know, 21-7 to seven type of win or 24-7 to seven type of win for yeah. the 49ers. But I'll, I'll take that. A chance at three t sure. touchdowns. The problem is, is if Watson's gone, do you play a do you play a Brown? I mean, you have Jerome Ford now limited in practice due to a knee injury. Four, I would have no confidence in Elijah Moore or Najoku. If if it's Walker, which we presume it will be, I'd still probably play Cooper. I it'll depend on your options. Let me give you some guys here. Let's go. Uh, we talk Zay Flowers. Against Tennessee or Amari Cooper? With no Watson? Yes. Zay Flowers. Okay. Uh Jacoby Myers against the Patriots. Jacoby Myers. Thank you were you yeah. were dead I'll, I'll give you props. You were you. dead on with Jacoby Myers. Great player, From from great week situation. one. Like this was one of those situations where you know, you come into the season after one week and you could overreact. But Mike, you you saw it, you saw it clearly, you knew that this was like Jimmy Garoppolo's out there, and I've seen it now in recent weeks. It's like he's going to throw it to Jacoby Myers or he's going to throw it to Devontae Adams, and he's not going to look at anybody else. Or he'll throw it to Jacoby at the detriment of Devontae Yeah, or Adams. he'll throw it to the opposing team. But those are yeah, the only sure. three options. Uh, the sneaky play of K.J. Osborne against the Chicago Bears or Amari Cooper with no Watson. If, if there's no Watson, I just have no confidence going up against this defense with the 49ers. Okay. I mean, so you, that, that's a because you a big downgrade. You just for those that are going, what? What are you talking about? Like, he had six targets without Watson in the last game. He had one catch for sixteen yards. Which, like these weren't Walker targets. No, and, but Walker targets aren't that good, brother. They're they are they are exponentially better than what we saw in the field last week. Okay, we saw PJ Walker last year. He completed fifty nine percent of his passes. Okay, that's. <laughs> He threw what? three touchdowns in six games. Okay. Okay. And three interceptions. So DTR was a new level of low. Yes. But without his existence, we would still look at PJ Walker as a level of low. Agreed. Going against the 49ers. Agreed. So, so look, Amari Cooper is not a must bench. If you think those six targets will turn into three catches instead of one, don't expect a ceiling. Don't expect two touchdowns in this game. Debo, Brandon Ayuk, if you've been playing them, you probably yes. play them. Yeah, do you play? I mean, this is going to be a defensive war. These are the two best defenses in football right now. Sure. Or two of the. Do you, so do you think the. But you think that the 49ers are going to cover that seven? No, I don't. Oh. No, well, Watson is the. Let me know okay. what's going on with Watson. Yeah, they'll probably cover it without Watson. And if you have not seen the photo. 
that David Njoku posted. He burned his face off. His f- he burned his face off. <laughs> he, it's it, gone. It is a rough, rough injury, and he played football. The no con- further comments. Yeah, I mean about the Cleveland Browns. It's so we. No, I, I got a comment. It's so weird, man. What is happening? No further comments. <laughs> Here's some comments. I, I can't. I can't stop. The dude burned his face off. Do you think there's something non-injury related here? No, I don't think so. You think Watson? Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I. I. I do we have nothing on Watson today? Well, check. You better. I. I. I do believe. I do believe that Watson is is hurt, and I'm not. I. It's. I'm not. I can't question the toughness because I don't know. Like, if I'm I mean, him, I skip the Ravens and 49ers. That was super smart. I was risk gonna, mitigation. <laughs> was a good point to the schedule, but oh. as a quarterback who's not been playing very well for uh, for Cleveland, <laughs> the Cleveland Browns. If we have two tough matchups and your shoulders hurt, and you can say that my shoulder hurts, so I don't want to play. Here's a great update for you guys. Okay. Uh, OC Alex Van Pelt said it's still up in the air if Deshaun Watson will face the 49ers. He's doing everything he can, though. That's what they say. That's good. Good job. Uh, Brock Purdy, I I think you're not – I don't really want in on that this week just because the passing volume is always low. And and Cleveland is just shutting people down. They they are, but Purdy is just – so he's a stud. Brock Purdy's a stud. Do do we want to? I mean, I, we don't got time to talk about the whole thing. But do you think Purdy is not a system stud? I think that he is. The system is elevating, but I think that the NFL just they missed. They missed on a on a uh, like. It feels like if he mental, landed somewhere else, you, you don't get to see anything. Probably. And it's hard when Jimmy Garoppolo was so good in San Francisco. He wasn't. I don't. He think, wasn't this. Good. He wasn't this good. No, he wasn't this good because he made more mistakes. But exactly. And per, Purdy deserves a ton of credit. I just. Yeah, I. I they mean, make I, everybody look good. I mean, Nick Mullins had good weeks. I mean, you had. But I am at the point where I am considering. To acknowledge that they made the right decision to go to to oh, Purdy over Trey good, Lance. Good, good. I'm Mike. almost there. Uh, there was a long discussion about Purdy on the Dynasty podcast. By the way, if you want to. Uh, check that out out there, the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty show. And you should. The Panthers are 0-5, and, and they're taking on the 4-1 and one Dolphins. Good golly. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook <laughs> line here, Miami minus 13.5. The over-under is 48.5. Oh, man. Massacre? Yep. Here, The nice thing yep. is, is that Miami, while they will destroy the Panthers, they will probably allow Adam Thielen to have a pretty good game. Oh, he'll he no matter what, Adam Thielen will he'll get a bunch of catches and he will they'll be in catch up mode and then he'll get a garbage touchdown. Probably. Uh, he's done that like three times. Oh yeah. The, the last, little on the one yard line last, garbage touchdowns. Last week it was, I believe, four receptions on the final drive. Wouldn't you are not playing to win, but on the final drive and the touchdown. It was just the stinkiest of the garbage, but Every week, it will it will just continue. There's no reason to think it won't. Miles Sanders didn't practice. I don't think you play. Oh, you, cannot, you can't play him until Chuba's interesting. Yes, I, I I can agree with that. It's an okay matchup against the Dolphins, but Miles Sanders, even before I I didn't see this, did not practice with a shoulder. So this is a new injury because he's been dealing with the groin. But Miles Sanders is a player who I'm not dropping, but he is on my bench until I watch with my eyeballs a game of the Carolina Panthers where Miles gets a bunch of work and looks good. Yeah, and and you know, looking at his game log, I mean, he had one year, he had one week where he was the RB12 this year and it was a game he went 9 for 24 on the ground. He just happened to get into the end zone. Otherwise, he's been pretty disappointing dealing with injury. Yeah, the, Mike uh, is right. Chuba though, yeah, Chuba has looked better than Miles. Dolphins defense 26 against opposing running backs when adjusted for schedule. So, could be opportunities there for Chuba in the passing game. He could be a flex worthy surprise start this week. He yeah, he could like Miles the only thing that Miles has done has stopped Chuba from having true fantasy value. And but if he's gonna miss with a shoulder injury, then Chuba is in 
strong consideration for me. Yeah, I had the question about DJ Chark. To me, he's as much of a dart throw as Jonathan Mingo. Mingo had his best game as a pro last week. Both of them are dart, dart throws that I'm trying not to play. Tua, of course, Tyreek and Waddle, yep. And then Mostert is the oh, guy. Yes. He's the guy. Oh, yes. There's, the question is, what is your confidence? Assuming we get the the all clear from, like, Jeff Wilson's going to make his debut. Are you playing Jeff that, Wilson? That bothers here? me more than if Jeff Wilson sat. If if Wilson sat, and then I'd say you could play Ahmed as a, as a flex. If Wilson's back, I think you'll see both players. And that's a Him problem. And to, yes, I think you'll see both of those guys maybe in that role, at least as of right now. Ackman's back at practice. It's been a while for Wilson. I I just would be it surprised has. if they op if they give him everything as no, in no, that two role. Not necessarily everything, but it's looking at the the. Well, match, what's your opinion? The matchup is great, and the line again is essentially two touchdowns that the Dolphins are favored to win by. If the Dolphins are up by two touchdowns going into the fourth quarter, I think Jeff Wilson's going to get some time, and I, I think he'll also get some time before that. He'll be a part of the, you know, part of the blowout before then. But I think that he's a low end flex, not high confidence, but assuming we hear enough good news over the next couple of days, I, I'll be willing to play him. The Dolphins have ninety three plays of ten plus yards this year. Good grief. As someone who has Tua, it's very fun to watch knowing that every play. The worst part about Tua is that you get around the 10-yard line and they score on the ground all the time. Can we get the tap pass going? Yes, seriously. Can we not? We don't need to in, we don't need to swing it around. Just tap it. Just tap that pass. Yes. Colter, I totally agree. Colter 3-2. and two. Also, I mean, like, like, let's look at – let's really – let's be honest about it. Let's be honest. In the play, who touches the ball first? quarterback right the quarterback has to get the ball to the running back mm. let's get so some, you want points for choice i making want a decision i want points for rushing touchdowns <laughs> for the quarterback for the handoff just i don't want the yards just give me the touchdown oh i thought you were gonna say like points per handoff <laughs> points per positive handoff yes if the play goes forward you made the decision to hand it off you could have kept it to yourself yes. selfishness <laughs> selflessness yes all right, the Colts are three and two. Jacksonville's three and two. DK Sportsbook line: Jacksonville minus four. The over under is forty four and a half. Signs of life last week from the Jacksonville offense. The impressive upset. Now they don't have their home crowd, the beef eater crowd, to lean on because they went two and zero in London. Beefy. You know, Trevor Lawrence, Calvin Ridley. Yes, please. Yeah. Yep. Travis Etienne has looked great. He has looked great. And Christian Kirk is settling into wide receiver two, three territory. Yeah, the and Zay Jones. Zay Jones was back and immediately a part of the game plan this past week. Caught the touchdown. Oh, that was yeah, that's pretty. Caught the touchdown. It was a great play. He's like, got hands, man. Zay Jones. Yeah, he's a good player, but he did not. I mean, he left the game because of a knee. Got an MRI. They said the results were positive, but he did not practice on Wednesday. I would. I mean, he probably misses again, and if. If Zay Jones is out, Christian positive for a sore knee, <laughs> right? But I'm saying if if Jones is out, then Christian Kirk is a full confidence play. I mean, if Jones plays, you're you're probably still going with Christian Kirk. The apparently week one was just an anomaly, and they went, oh yeah, this guy that we gave all the money to, we should probably let him play more football. But with Jones out, Kirk is a very strong start. Uh, this matchup, divisional one. 44-point over-under, Gardner Minshew back at quarterback. When Minshew plays quarterback, it gives me more confidence in both Pittman and Josh Downs. Totally agree. Josh Downs had 25% of the Minshew targets. I think he's a great DFS play. I think he's a very interesting full PPR play. Uh, both of those guys will get targets. Mm -hmm. If you had to start Jonathan Taylor or Zach Moss, you are starting who? This week. Oh, man. I mean, let, let me be very clear. The, mat the, I would say the matchup is a stinky as the the Jags are second when adjusting for schedule against fantasy running backs, allowing under 10 points. So it's it's not great either way. And 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 for though, like, I'm not embarrassed to admit, like, I legitimately don't know what's going to happen. Now. I I don't either. Like, I if you when I when I say make an opinion who you'd start, it is a shot in the dark. Because if Jonathan Taylor, you know, they said that they're going to ramp up his work. Look, a ramp. Think about a ramp. Yeah, there's they're long. They're, they could be very high. Yeah, 
It could be one of those really low ramps. You barely can tell you're even walking up. Yeah, it was just, this is a three-degree ramp. It could be a three-degree. Uh, technically, I'm moving up, so it's a ramp. And so if it's one of those ramps, maybe Jonathan Taylor gets 12 touches this week after six. Maybe he gets 10 instead of six. And maybe Zach Moss is the guy again. Now, the matchup sucked for Zach Moss last week. If they had, if they had, a, if God. they had a good matchup last week, I think Zach Moss would have been talked about as a flex play. He was completely off the board because Tennessee doesn't give up any points to running backs. And then you know everybody's like, "Oh, why didn't you tell me to play Zach Moss?" I'm like, I nobody knew that was going to happen. I because I didn't play Zach Moss. No, he's on my bench. I would have won the week. So Jacksonville's a bad matchup, but Zach Moss has been on fire. I, I if I have to pick between the two. Think I still play Moss, and that's how I'm, we'll end that I think discussion. I'm, I think I play Moss. That's how we will end that discussion. Let's yep. move on. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. All right, no starts of the week for Jay Grizz. All Bears, all the time. We already heard Jason starts of the week, Space Mountain and Credit Coaster, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Rise of the Resistance. Uh, I would read his uh, status message in our Slack channel, but it's not safe for work. <laughs> it involves Disneyland and saying goodbye to everybody here. Uh, it's, so, it's pretty rude, to yeah, be Yeah, I mean, it, you know, we're not in Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, so I don't... He's, like, well, you got to kick me when I'm down. He's really holding it against us. Uh, so let's, let's start it off, Mike, me and you. Right. Uh, who's your quarterback? I'm going with Matthew Stafford. I love my, it. From my streamer to my start of the week, Rams ranked third in pass rate over expectation, number one in plays per game on a pace of nearly 5,000 yards. Just It hasn't been the touchdowns, but it will be But it will be with Cooper Cup back yet. We, we got back up to two passing touchdowns the second that Cooper Cup got on a football field, and the Cardinals are dead last in schedule-adjusted fantasy points to the quarterback position. I'm going Kirk Cousins. Bills giving up so our bills. The Bears giving up so many points. Um, second most passing touchdown, second highest passer rating, and I think people are kind of like worried about staying in the flames. Yeah, with without Cousins, Jefferson, I get which it. is fair. I mean, you lose your best target and the best player in the game, but nobody throws more than Minnesota. Fields' recent success could be a real shootout. Minnesota's defense. The reason that Cousins has been throwing for what he's throwing is they their defense isn't doing enough. I'm going to go with Kirk Cousins at running back. I'm going with Isaiah Pacheco versus the Broncos. Delightful. He is the running back 13 on the Delightful. season. Delightful. Uh, am I trying to curse Pacheco by making Ooh. him a star of the week? You'll never know. Mm. But he is my star of the week. Denver yeah. allowing the highest yards per carry, 5.9. It's the highest yards per carry ever through five games. And the Mahomes has not been Mahomesing because they've been going to Pacheco more, which this is a strange defense, I, but – I I don't put it past Andy Reid to strange be, offense. Or yes, I'm sorry, strange offense. But Andy Reid is like he's a chameleon. He changes things, and if he feels like I have an advantage right now running the ball, he's going to take it. Well, it's the first time that I've been like, oh, they, like after Cream Hunt left, everybody's tried to put somebody yes. in the shoes of Cream Hunt. Yep, and no one's been able to fill him. Maybe we're getting a little of that. Uh, my running back start of the week it's Raheem Mostert, and if we have a single running mate for Raheem Mostert. So I'm going to do both of those against Carolina. But Mostert is uh, – if no team has given up more rushing touchdowns than Carolina, nine of them. No t no player has scored more rushing touchdowns in the league than Raheem Mostert, seven of them. The Panthers are giving up 141 rushing yards per game. Tw uh, they rank 29th in the PFF rush defense grades, and that means that Mostert can blow up in the first half and his running mate can blow up in the second half of this game. And that could be Salvin Ahmed. That could be uh, – Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson. Yep. So pay attention. I am starting. The only situation I'm avoiding is if both of those guys are active and we legitimately don't know who it's going to be. All right, my wide receiver start. It is Chris Godwin. Yeah, against, this is an interesting one. Against the Detroit Lions. Like we saw it when Mike Evans went down just before the bye week. Godwin went 8 for 114 on 11 targets. A 25% nice target share on the year. And, yes, the Lions, it is a scary defense and so you go up oh, I don't want to play my guys against the Detroit Lions but it's re but you can't run on them you are forced to throw against them which has turned the Lions rank 27th 27th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to wide receivers because teams they have to throw they're averaging 39 pass attempts per game against the Detroit Lions 
and Baker has shown that he's capable with a limited or maybe out Mike Evans, it's gonna the ball will have to go to Chris Godwin. My wide receiver is Calvin Ridley against the Colts. We saw him in week one where he was the wide receiver six. It's been a bumpy ride since then, but uh, one of the more interesting stats here, Ridley in the top 10 when it comes to percentage of catches over 20 yards. The Colts are the second worst in the league when it comes to giving those 20-plus yard plays up. I think it's going to be a home run kind of week for Calvin Ridley. And I have... Oh! Uh, yep. Oh, hit that button. Hit that button. Nasty. Oh, so nasty. It's Zach Ertz. Mm. It is Jaros. <laughs> Thank you, but... He keeps getting targeted. He's tied for the fourth most targets at the tight end position. He's one of six tight ends with eight plus fantasy points in at least three of five weeks. I love it. The Rams are. I 30th. hate it, and I love it. Yes, the Rams are thirty. Like the the matchup says, we go with tight ends against the Rams, and Zach Ertz is getting targets. It's, <laughs> oh, it look, it's not. It leads to fantasy success for us. It does not lead. To, to offensive success. Yeah, I'm back in Cardinals. wanting that number one pick. I, um, how are the how are the Cardinals not figuring this out? Like, unless they're – are they serious about tanking? Because yeah. if, if I were trying to tank, I'd be throwing the ball to Zach Ertz too. That whole game's going to be interesting because Hollywood right now, he's he's sick. Hopefully he'll be playing. Yeah, he probably will. But um, one thing we didn't – did you guys talk about the backfield with DeMarcado and, and Ingram and Rondell Moore? Like, Rondell Moore yeah, is getting yeah. five carries a game right now. Yeah. Uh, Logan Thomas is my start of the week at tight end, taking on Atlanta. Uh, he was on the hungry for more yesterday. He's averaging over six targets a game. Um, you know, this is uh, this is an opportunity for Thomas. You can chase those targets, and those are the starts of the week. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Mike, I'll give you I've, a moment to unroll. I, I, while the camera was on you, I digitized it. Okay. Yeah. That, and then – See, the drama is, is lost without the unrolling. Well, but it – You don't it, unroll a digital scroll, Mike. Well, I – but I, I want you to pull out the real I scroll. I would, but pull it, it, out. it vaporized Mission Impossible style. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This is where I clear my throat. <clears> throat> <clears throat> Lights, please. Thank you. This week on Boom Boom Kicker, Jason is in Disneyland, but a new hero emerges. Okay. Jason's absence left an opportunity, so I started a mutiny, summoning a kicking force led by me. Dashing and handsome, I paid out a king's ransom, unleashing the Cowboys, Brandon Aubrey. That's fun. Yeah, you enjoyed it? That's, the that's fun. Yeah, that's I fun. need my own boom boom segment. You think Jason goes to some of those like uh, the, the, the poetry slams? Oh, and it gets on the gets on the board and just starts reading boom booms. <laughs> Everyone out there is going, what the heck is this guy talking about? Oh, they'd be into it. They'd be like, what? This is so meta. Who is Matt Gay? <laughs> Who is Brandon Aubrey? Who is Bra Brandon Aubrey? All right. I don't know. There you no go. No one knows. No one knows. All right. Tomorrow, everybody out there, do not miss it. Mike makes his first appearance. Oh, uh, yeah. On the uh, Fantasy Faceoffs Wheel of Shame, I will reveal the million dollar lineup during that segment tomorrow, and we'll get into the rest of the matchups. Catch you up on some of that news, that injury news. See if Deshaun Watson's playing. Uh, see if some of these other questionable fellas. It's it's incredible. The like, Watson situation. Yeah, is it's a. It's I a, think it's, it's made for TV. Maybe it's nothing though. Maybe it's maybe. just with the drama. We just want drama in that situation. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> All no, right. That's no one knows what's going on. That is going to do it. When we come back tomorrow, we can uh, reflect on the fact Pacheco and Kelsey decimated Mike on Thursday Night Football. More than likely. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.